I put out a video last year that has kind of sort of taken off in views and popularity. It's the one that demonstrates how to test your voltage regulator rectifier and your motorcycle stator. Well, a lot of you have some serious issues with your motorcycle charging system since I get a fair number of questions regarding the stator and voltage regulator rectifiers. I thought I would update that video and show what's going on electrically in the system and revisit what each one of the components does. One of the feedback comments from the last video on stator testing mentioned that I didn't test the AC current coming off the stator and defaulted to the Honda test of checking for ground continuity to determine if the stator has a failed phase circuit in it. What we don't want is continuity between any one of these three phases that come off the stator uh, that go into this plug to the, the, the bike itself. Do the same test. We have another issue there, and the final one. Now I do want to point out that this is the correct way to test a three-phase stator. And if you haven't seen this one yet, you should probably watch it first. Well, for those of you that have asked, here's what it looks like when you test for AC output of your stator. Most modern Japanese and European motorcycles will have three wires coming out of the stator that lead to the voltage regulator rectifier. Each one of these wires is connected to a series of copper coils wound around an insulated pole or series of poles that generate electricity when a magnet is passed over them. I say series of poles because it's not just one bundle of coil windings attached to the wire coming out of your stator. There are multiple coil bundles wired together 180 degrees apart from each other. These series of wires wrapped around insulated poles in the stator are also referred to as phase. So three wires coming out of your stator means that there are three separate bundles of coils linked in series and your stator is three phase. Each phase supplying electricity to run your motorcycle and keep your battery charged. If your motorcycle is older or is a Harley Davidson, it might only have two wires coming off the stator. In the case of the Harley, it's still a three phase stator. It just ties the three phases into one lead and then supplies the other lead as a neutral. Very small displacement engines only need one phase of AC power for their stators, but still use two wires, a hot and a neutral wire. They're often called single phase stators and can have additional coils for ignition or DC power when a battery is not needed. The magnet in your motorcycle is in a drum that is connected to the flywheel of your engine. When the engine runs, the magnet turns at very high speed, passing both its north or positive magnetic pole and its south or negative magnetic pole over the copper windings. The voltage coming off the stator is high over 20 volts AC and fluctuates based on the number of times the magnet passes over the coil windings. To test this voltage, find the connector between the stator and your regulator rectifier. Open this connector up and focus on the stator side. If you remember the ground test from the last video, if any of these three wire leads ground to the engine of your motorcycle, the internal structure of that phase in the stator has failed and your stator needs to be replaced. This is due to those insulated poles breaking down and now all the electricity produced in those wire coils is going to ground. You can still have a functioning stator with a weak phase however and this is what live voltage testing will indicate. To test the live voltage on the stator start the bike up. The bike will still run provided you have a charge in the battery. The electricity for the bike is being supplied entirely from the battery with the stator disconnected from the voltage regulator rectifier. Set your multimeter to alternating current. It usually is the symbol with the V and then a squiggly horizontal line. I'm using some rubber gloves to hold on to the connector. Now it's unlikely that I would get a shot, but my focus is distracted between getting everything in frame and the camera and holding the probe, so I put these gloves on. Higher voltage has the ability to travel with less resistance, but usually you need to be over 48 volts for this to really be an issue. You can put the probes on any two leads and measure voltage. The goal here is to make sure all combinations of phases show near equal alternating voltage. 
If you only have two wires coming out of your stator, this is a straightforward test. There are only two combinations. With a three-phase stator, we want to move the probes around the leads in all of the different combinations. If the voltage is consistent between phases, your stator should be good. Sometimes you'll see the stator with a melted or damaged connector. This can be caused by a couple of things, but if the connector is loose or not seated correctly, if the blades in the connector are bent, spread too wide, or damaged, this can cause resistance and quickly heat up the connection. If the connector is not properly shielded from getting wet, or a ground source, however unlikely, you can get arcing from the connector to a ground like your engine or steel frame. If your stator is repeatedly failing, there's something else going on in your electrical system. It's likely the stator is having resistance going to ground, either through the regulator rectifier or somewhere else in the harness. Check your grounding connections, especially the negative cables from your battery to the engine. Remove, clean, or better yet, replace the cable. The obvious next thing to change is the regulator rectifier. Faulty diodes result in current being sent back through the stator, but it could also be an issue with your battery. If the cells in your battery are failing, this is likely due to sulfation. But there could be a structural failure between the plates, shorting out the cells internally. Sometimes when this happens, the regulator rectifier cannot see the voltage resistance at the battery to know that it's fully charged. When this happens, the regulator rectifier keeps dumping current into the battery. Now this usually destroys what's left of the battery, but hey, the battery is one of those least expensive parts to replace, and if it's more than three years old, it's due for a replacement. The regulator rectifier does two jobs. It converts alternating current coming from the stator to direct current, which is used by your motorcycle and regulates the voltage supplied to your motorcycle through the battery. We work for Mr. Tunstall as regulators. We regulate any stealing of his property. We're damn good too. Let's tackle the first of these two jobs. Converting AC to DC is traditionally done by diodes in the regulator rectifier. These diodes act like one-way valves, and when the alternating current is in the positive flow, or in this graph in the upper part of the current wave, it allows energy to flow through to the bike. There is one rectifying diode for each phase of electricity coming off the stator. When the alternating current swings back down and reverses the flow of electricity, the diode senses this reversal and shuts off the connection between the stator and the rest of the motorcycle. When the positive flow of current returns in the next cycle, the diode opens the electricity valve and allows current back into the system. This all happens thousands of times per minute in each of the three phases on the bike. To test the diodes of your regulator rectifier, open the connection between the regulator rectifier and the wiring harness on your motorcycle. Set your multimeter to diode test mode, which looks like this. In this bike, there are four wires that we are going to use for this test. Two red and two black. Your bike might only have one of each, which is a positive and a negative connection. Now we're testing the regulator rectifier in the opposite side of the way it would normally flow DC current when the bike is on. So to properly test the diodes, we need to connect our black or negative probe to the red or positive wire in the connector, and our red or positive probe to the black or negative wire in the connector. When we do this, you'll see the values on the multimeter change, and they should be very close in value between the two sets of positive and negative wires coming out of the regulator rectifier. If we reverse the leads from our multimeter, we see that the value does not change since the regulator rectifier diodes have shut off the flow of current. If you were to see the values change here, it would indicate a failure in the regulator rectifier diodes. We can illustrate audibly the diode at work in the regulator rectifier. I've set the multimeter to a continuity test. This just audibly measures a closed circuit between the meter leads. So I've switched the multimeter from testing diode to continuity, which is that guy right there. So if we hook um, the meter up properly with the red probe to the negative or ground wires, the black probe to the hot wires, the red ones, watch the meter as I get this position and hook it up. You'll see just like on the diode test, the meter move as current is allowed to flow through the regulator rectifier. And now I'm going to switch that around. 
and do it the opposite way. Now, when we tested the diodes, we see no change, and that's because the diodes are shutting off the, uh, the current flow. But it takes them a couple tenths of a second in order to do that. And what I've done here is now I've switched the probe, so I've got the red probe on the hot wires, positive wires, and I'm going to take the black uh, probe and put it on the negative one. And I want you to listen to the beep of continuity and then it immediately shut off as the diode shuts off the reverse flowing electricity. So it's really, really, really quiet. I'm not sure if you if you heard that at all. Um, but let's try it one more time. Listen really closely. You can audibly hear the diode shut the connection off since current is flowing in the opposite direction of what it's supposed to. It takes a few hundredths of a second for the diode to sense this reversal of current flow and close the one-way valve. This delay is referred to as ripple, since in these few hundredths of a second, current would be flowing back to the stator if the bike was running. The efficiency of the system is compromised slightly as current is reversed to the lower part of the wave. Now, I've received a few comments and emails regarding MOFSET regulator rectifiers. To overly simplify the explanation, MOFSETs are semiconductors that take the place of diodes in the regulator rectifier. MOFSETs shut the one-way valve considerably faster than a diode can. This increases the efficiency, which means that there is less heat being generated by the regulator rectifier and virtually no current ripple in the system. Hey, you wanna get high? This is referred to as high frequency charging since only the upper part of the current or high part of the wave <coughs> is allowed through the MOFSET. <coughs> MOFSET regulator rectifiers claim to put less of a load on the stator, but I've never used one on a motorcycle and can't say for myself if they would be worth paying more for over a traditional diode one. With the shortage of MOFSET chipsets over the past year, you're typically paying a premium for one of these regulator rectifiers. The other job that a regulator rectifier does is to regulate the voltage in the motorcycle's DC electrical system. It does this by measuring current resistance at the battery. Different batteries can impact this feature. Most flooded batteries, which include AGM and gel batteries, run at higher internal resistance that varies during the battery's state of charge so a higher voltage is required. Lithium ion batteries operate at about five to 10% lower voltage than a flooded battery does. This is due to the output of the higher capacity and consistency in the current that a lithium ion produces. And its resistance is fairly flat regardless of the battery's state of charge. A flooded battery starts out at a higher voltage number then discharges like a ski slope, a steady almost 45 degree downward run. Lithium ion is much more gradual and maintains its voltage longer, reducing during discharge at slower rates. There are a lot of other advantages to lithium ion batteries as well. They don't chemically sulfate and don't require top of maintenance charging. They weigh a fraction of what a lead acid battery weighs and can be well worth the investment if you're looking to replace your battery. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment and as always, your likes and subscriptions are greatly appreciated. If you found this video helpful and think someone else would as well, be sure to share it with your page, forum, subgroup, or just your friend. Hey, thanks for watching and be sure to ride safe.